It's been a few weeks since I got my M1 24 inch green iMac and today I'm giving my review on its performance. This is the 24 inch green iMac with 4.5K retina display, including the Apple M1 chip with eight core CPU with 16 gigs of unified memory, gigabyte ethernet, two Thunderbolt USB four ports, two USB three ports, 256 gigs of SSD storage, a magic mouse, magic keyboard with touch ID, and accessory kit. So today I'm going over the pros and the cons of this computer and then wrapping it up with whether or not you should buy it. So let's start with the pros. The very first pro that I was very eager to test out is the speed and overall performance when it comes to my video editing software like Premiere Pro and After Effects. Coming from my 2015 MacBook Pro, I knew that there was going to be an increase in speed. However, I am very pleased to say that it is exactly what I was looking for. There is very minimal lagging when I am moving through the footage. It plays back great at quarter resolution. It actually plays pretty all right in full resolution as well in Premiere. So very happy with that. I had been struggling with playback issues on my laptop. So I'm very happy that I can now do much bigger projects on my M1 desktop uh, without a problem with playback. Moving over to After Effects, I was incredibly pleased and also a little surprised. I know that this computer is powerful, but I was hearing some rumors that it wasn't going to be able to handle After Effects or wasn't going to work properly with it. Whatever the case, I opened it with After Effects. I tested it out with some templates and some projects and it was working great for me. It plays back. I mean, it still has to render when it's, you know, moving through playback when you want to play it and watch something in After Effects, but it is significantly faster. Everything moves much faster, just less lagging overall. So super happy about that because I can now do both bigger projects with uh, Premiere on this computer. And if I ever have anything that is After Effects related, I definitely will be doing it on this computer as well. I say that because I'm keeping my laptop as well. Having two computers is super helpful. And so I bought this computer just as an addition to my workflow rather than a replacement. So I'm very happy to say that it will be a very strong supplement, if not replacement after a while, uh, to my 2015 MacBook Pro. Another plus that is probably to be expected is that there is a big webcam upgrade. I don't use Zoom every day, but I use it enough to know that the webcam quality on my laptop is definitely lacking in some departments and I have considered getting an additional webcam to add on to there. However, with the M1 iMac, the webcam is beautiful. It is much clearer and the lighting overall is uh, a lot less contrasted, so I don't look as um, shiny. So not a huge deal breaker, but just thought I'd add that the webcam is a definite upgrade. If you are familiar with uh, the 2015 MacBook Pro series, just good to know that the webcam on the M1 iMac is significantly better. And another fun bonus that I actually wasn't expecting because I had thought that the model that I was choosing did not include ethernet, but actually I, when I was unpacking this iMac, I noticed in the charger that there actually is an ethernet port in there and I now am seeing it on the specs. So I don't know, I must've missed something, but that was also kind of a nice bonus. I don't currently use ethernet. I just use Wi-Fi. I definitely am finding that I should probably move to ethernet because the Wi-Fi definitely is the only thing holding me up from super fast speed editing. I probably within the next few months will be considering getting an ethernet cable now that I know that that is an option and that will definitely increase the speed to which I can work in terms of downloading footage and uploading projects. So I am excited about that. So now what do you have all been waiting for? The cons. I knew to some degree that this was going to be kind of a guinea pig purchase because I knew that I needed a stronger computer. I knew that I wanted a desktop of some sort. I had greatly considered considered purchasing an iMac Pro. I knew that was gonna be a pretty big jump in price. So actually it was around that time when I was looking at just sort of impulse buying a big computer and just doing it is when I saw that Apple was coming out with these new M1 iMacs. And while of course I did enough research to make myself feel comfortable, I you know looked up, can it handle editing? I knew that because it's a new computer, because it's kind of newer technology, it was going to be sort of even more of an impulse purchase than the iMac Pro. But I decided to just jump on it and do it and test it out because the price was appealing, uh, the color was appealing, the sleekness was appealing. So I just went for it. And while I love this computer, it does freeze. 
Not only does it freeze sometimes when I am in Premiere Pro, and I've definitely dealt with that on my MacBook Pro, it happens, but it's just frustrating because this is a newer computer. That's actually not the most concerning part. It freezes just for no reason. I won't have Premiere Pro open, I won't even have After Effects open, and it just freezes. It's been a couple times now that I've had to restart the computer. Has anything crazy beyond that happened? No. Have I had to actually contact Apple and say, what the heck, I'm losing things? No. It's just freezing, it's just doing what Apple does sometimes, and it just kind of conks out. It sucks, <laughs> is, is, is all I can say. You know, with any time that there is a new phone or a new update, you always hear to kind of wait it out because there's normally going to be an update to fix some of those things. I'm just waiting for that like any other Apple product. It's just a little bit frustrating because this is not just my iPhone that might be acting weird. This is my brand new desktop, which I am doing professional work on. And so I would like to be able to rely on this computer for certain things. And while my MacBook Pro may do, you know, other quirky things, you know, you just come to understand your computer and what it can handle. And if something goes wrong, you're like, oh, you know, you just, you just feel more comfortable with it. This is a new purchase. I don't know this computer yet. I don't, you know, I don't feel, we're not friends yet. So I'm hoping we can be friends. I'm hoping we can get to know each other a little better because right now she is just kind of an untrustworthy turd. So hopefully in the future, the freezing will go away. The quirks will kind of fade out and it will run really great. But that is a huge con, especially right out of the gate probably within the first few days of me using it, it is just, it definitely has freezing episodes. So not great Apple. Uh, another con that is not really a con because I knew going into it, but the fact that it is all Thunderbolt and USB-C ports, it is a con because I knew going into it that I had to purchase additional hardware to be able to use this computer properly because all of my hard drives have USB 3 ports. And so I knew that I was going to need to buy adapters. The adapters are great. I purchased two different kinds of anchor adapters. One is a one-to-one -one adapter and you just plug directly into the adapter and it goes right into the USB-C port. And the other one, you can probably see it right behind me, is the Anchor four port hub adapter for USB 3 to USB-C adapter. So uh, both of them work pretty all right, pretty much as well as any adapter would. Every once in a while there is some disconnecting if I leave the computer and it goes to sleep and I come back there, you know, there might be some disconnecting issue. But as far as actual work performance goes, they are working great. I haven't really noticed too much of a lag or anything. So um, they are great adapters. I actually have a link if you are looking to purchase them to go along with your fancy new iMac purchase, you can purchase those down below in uh, some Amazon links. But moving on to another con because I've got plenty. Another small issue that I have with this computer is how long it takes for me to actually open up programs like Premiere or After Effects or really any of the Creative Suite. I can't say that I'm mad about it. I'm used to programs taking a like, you know, a minute or two to open up fully. It's just I thought maybe it would be a little bit faster on this computer and it is absolutely not. It is definitely comparable, honestly, maybe if not slower. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. It's just something that I definitely was not impressed with when I first started using this computer. The performance when the program is actually open is great. It's a great improvement. However, actually opening the programs significantly slower. And I know that that can have a lot to do with where uh, the program is opening up from. Maybe that's something I just need to explore a little more and test out. But uh, right off the bat, that's just definitely something that I noticed. One of the bigger cons that I'm finding to be frustrating in my work workflow on Premiere is the color difference between this computer and my previous MacBook Pro. Now I know that both of those computers are not properly calibrated for proper color correction or color grading. However, I have been used to the way that my MacBook Pro looks. To me, I think it's a little undersaturated. You know, it's just something that I need to keep in mind when I am coloring. Maybe I am just so used to the undersaturated look on my MacBook Pro that I am thrown off because the M1 iMac, the color when specifically I am looking at the footage in Premiere Pro is to me oversaturated. It is way too 
too saturated than I think it actually looks. Again, this is something I actually need to test out. I do not have a calibrated monitor. I don't do big cinematic jobs that kind of require that. I usually edit for social media where people are watching on all different kinds of personal computers or phones. So it, the color is always going to look a little bit different anyways. But in this situation, I still am a little bit thrown off because I do not know now exactly how I should color the footage. Do I ignore the level of saturation and just keep coloring the same way that I was? Because right now the footage looks like crap. So I'm still tweaking that out of how to kind of calibrate my own self, but I have looked in as far as how to change those settings on either through Premiere Pro or through Apple in their settings, and I have not found out a way to do that. So if it's even an issue, please leave a comment below because I am definitely looking to figure out how to go about that. So to wrap things up here, should you buy the M1 24 inch iMac? In my opinion, I think you should wait for the kinks to work out a little bit. I think this depends significantly on your situation. In my situation, I do not regret buying this iMac because I knew that I needed a new computer, I knew that I had big projects coming up, and I knew that no matter what, this was going to be a definite improvement to my situation, which it is. However, if you are not in the market to buy a new computer right now, and if you can wait until maybe this fall to buy a new computer, I think you should wait. Buy that then either the kinks will be worked out on this computer or you can take a look at the new releases that Apple is planning to offer in the fall of 2021. For example, they are teasing their new 29 inch iMac that they may be releasing this fall. Also, there is going to be a new Mac mini that is being released as well. Both of those will be including the new Apple M1 technology to some degree, if not a more advanced version. So I think it would be safe to say that if you can wait, if you don't mind waiting, you should definitely wait until fall or the end of the year. Um, this always happens. With any new thing from Apple, there's always some kinks that need to be worked out. I have come to understand it fully and I have a lot of patience. So for me, I'm fine with this purchase. And if you are patient as well and you don't mind uh, a few little kinks and you just wanna get yourself a new fancy colored iMac, go for it, just know there are definitely a few quirks already that I am noticing right off the bat. So just keep those in mind when you are searching for your next computer. Since you made it this far, please, if you don't mind hitting the like button below and hit subscribe for more tips on video editing, freelance lifestyle and creativity. I would love to hear your thoughts on these pros and cons. And if you have anything to say, if you have purchased one of these iMacs lately and you have something to say about it, please leave a comment below. Check out these videos next for more on my new fancy purchase, as well as more videos on video editing lifestyle. Again, I'm Colleen and I will catch you guys in the next video. I hope that you have the goodest one.